Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Gucci Petite Marmont wallet on chain in the pink leather. Uh, all right, so grab your coffee, grab your tea, let's start your workout, let's go to work, let's do your laundry, whatever it is that you do, come join me. We have some awesome topics to cover today. Starting with the first question from Oksana Lefkina, hopefully I said it correctly. I don't know if it makes any sense, I just hope that I'm not alone. I purchased a few months ago my Holy Grail bag. It's a Chanel medium large in the caviar with gold hardware, but I don't use it. I'm afraid that something will happen to it, like scratches or stains. It just sits in my closet. It took me over a month to remove the plastic sticker from the lock. I use all my other bags no problem. I rotate them every few days, but not my Holy Grail. Did you ever experience something like that? This is a fabulous question, and I have definitely had this happen. Uh, the one that stands out the most, as many of you know, is my Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 Multicolor in the Blanc. Uh, this was my holy grail bag from the fashion house. It was a surreal moment when I was able to add it to my collection, but I never used it. I was terrified that I would get color transfer just because I have such dark colored clothing, so I ended up selling it, and I don't regret it, but still, that's the one that stands out the most. Um, but I think that when it comes to holy grail bags, especially ones with higher price points, you have that what if factor that constantly comes up, kind of like what you mentioned. You're constantly thinking, what if I get a color stain? What if I get color transfer? What if this happens? What if that happens? And it, re and it really ends up hindering you from, uh, from it fully enjoying your handbag. And I don't know if this applies to you or not, but with those same higher price points, um, I don't have the economic possibility to go to the boutique and buy another one if something happens. You know, I don't have an extra five, six thousand dollars lying around that I'm just like, oh, I got a color transfer, no big deal. I can go to the boutique and buy another one. Absolutely not, I don't. It takes months, years in order to be able to save up for that, you know, for that kind of a bag. And uh, kudos to anybody who has that possibility. I unfortunately don't. So between that and the fact that you're constantly wondering what if something happens, what if that happens, uh, like I said, it kind of hinders you from being able to enjoy the handbag. And what I'm about to say is something that I struggle with, is something, that, this is something that I know, it's kind of like uh, take a spoonful of my own medicine, uh, but you owe it to yourself to enjoy that bag, especially if it took you months, if it took you years to, to save up for it, if you know all the hard work, all the long hours you know, that went into saving up for that bag, you definitely owe it to yourself to enjoy it and just to be able to rock it out there. And every time you go out to, uh, you know, if, when you go to switch into it, you're going to remember everything, all the hard work that went into acquiring the funds for that bag. Like I said, it might not apply to you, it might, but that's how I see it. And uh, sometimes I get so scared about wanting to use a bag, I put it in a bubble, and when it's in that bubble, I'm just, I feel like that, that what if factor constantly you know, runs through my mind, but then, the other part of me is like, no, no, you save up for X amount of months, you saved up for X amount of years, and you worked overtime, you worked 60 hours this week, you worked 50 hours this week, or whatever it was, and it's almost like, damn it, I'm gonna enjoy this bag. And that's kind of the, that's kind of the, <laughs> that's kind of the, the attitude I think that you should have towards it. So uh, it will take baby steps. You will know exactly when it's perfect timing for you. But um, I say just go for it and don't think about it as hard as it is to, I mean, as easy as it is for me to say it, uh, but don't think about it. Just go for it and if you want, try to use it for a week straight and uh, see how it ends up working out. But major, major congratulations on your holy grail. I hope that this was helpful, uh, but this was a fantastic question. Next question from Emily E. You seem satisfied and happy with your life now, but if if you would be given a chance to reboot your life, is there any event that you would want to remove and add? If yes, what are those events, if you mind to share with us? Uh, this is a fantastic question and uh, it's kind of hard to say because I'm the type of person that um, I think that everything happens for a reason. It doesn't mean that I have a happy-go-lucky life with sunshine and rainbows 24-7, not at all. 
uh, but everything, everything that has been good in the past and everything that has been bad, even the bad times when I wanted to rip my heart out of my chest, when I was super angry, I know that everything has brought me to exactly who I am at this very moment. And I love my current state of mind. It's taken me a long, long time to get here. Uh, so I don't think I would end up change. I, I would end up changing anything. Um, you know, just because, um, like I said, when I was younger, I, I would, I had, I was very angry. I had a chip on my shoulder and as time has gone by, I feel that I'm able to see the positive a little bit more clearly on anything that goes on in my life. Sometimes it's not, sometimes I question things that happen. Um, you know, and I get, like I said, I, I start to, I start to question. I get very, very angry. Uh, but after I've had time to calm down, I always try to see a silver lining that doesn't always happen, but that's something that I always strive to do, you know, and, um, it's definitely helped to, to see situations a little bit differently. Um, that might not, um, that might not be the case with some of you guys. And some of you might know exactly what it is that I'm talking about. Um, but no, I don't think I'd change anything. Um, there have been times when I have thought about maybe I should have um, made a bigger deal about my wedding. Maybe I should have made more of a fuss. Um, I didn't have the bride gene. You know, I wasn't the type of girl that when I, you know, when I got married, I was just like, oh, I've, I want my dream wedding. Um, I, this is what my wedding dress is going to look like. This is this. I, I never had that happen in my life. You know, I wasn't that type of person. Uh, and sometimes I thought maybe I should have made a bigger deal. Maybe we should have had a bigger wedding. Maybe this, maybe that. But even with all those maybes, I love the fact that my husband and I took something so incredibly intimate and we made it just our own. Uh, my family wasn't there. His family wasn't there. There were no friends. And it would have been great to have that. But at the same time, the fact that it was just him and I was something absolutely incredible, you know, because it was just about us. It was a union about him and I, and as selfish as it sounds, as great as it would have been to have other people, I still wouldn't change it for anything in the world. I, I loved it and I would still do it again today. So it might be kind of um, ridiculous to say, uh, but I kind of view it like I do my, my handbags. There are no bat, there are, there's nothing that I regret. There are things that were extremely painful in my past, um, but the fact that they have brought me to who I am and what I see and how I feel about certain things at this very moment is something that I would never, I wouldn't trade it for, for a million dollars. I wouldn't trade it for any money in the, in the world because, uh, you know, maybe... Maybe I know some people have said that um, <laughs> I'm a little too happy. I'm a little too positive. Uh, that's definitely not the case, but I try to see the positive in every single scenario as painful as it is at the moment. But when that passes, um, I don't know, maybe it, that's my way of being able to cope with, with certain, with certain situations. You know what I mean? So no. I wouldn't change anything in my past. I wouldn't add anything to my past. Um, I would leave it exactly the same that it was and uh, that it's been. And if I had to do it all over again, I'd do it the exact same way. So fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Jennifer Blue. Just wondering your thoughts on the Louis Vuitton camera bag, Saint-Ange. Hopefully I'm saying it correctly. I have a feeling I'm butchering it. All right, leave me alone. <laughs> uh, I purchased it in the noir and I am seriously considering it in the lighter color too. I love it because of the top handle and its capacity. I just wish that the strap was detachable. I am curious if you would consider adding this bag to your gorgeous collection. Uh, this is a fabulous question. And first and foremost, congratulations on your newest beauty. I do have a picture of this bag and I will insert it right now. This one comes in at 1580 here in the States. It's available in three colors, noir, fuchsia, and white. The white is kind of like an off-white, uh, but I think that it is absolutely beautiful. I actually went into the boutique a few weeks back specifically to check it out because I think that it's incredibly similar to the Gucci Soho Disco. Um, but just like Jennifer had mentioned, it is incredibly spacious on the interior. You do have two slip pockets, so you have a little bit of organization. You are able to fit a full-size wallet, if I'm not mistaken, 
if you kind of tilt it on its side. But I think that you can get away with carrying uh, anywhere from like five to six, seven small leather goods in there, plus some other goodies. So it does have quite a bit of space. Uh, and I will have to agree with you. Uh, I was kind of bummed out at the fact that it didn't come with a detachable strap, because if it did, then just like you had mentioned, if you were able to just use it as a little bag, I think it would have been great. Uh, but it also adds to how much more versatility the handbag has in general. So the fact that it doesn't have a detachable strap is something that kind of hinders me from wanting to add it to my collection. Uh, but there's also another detail to it that I'm not too fond of, but I could not stop playing with, and those are the tassels. My goodness, uh, those tassels, I just kept I mean, I just kept playing with them. I kept going back and forth, back and forth. So much so that Lauren, my sales associate, she was just like, Minnie, are you all right? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's the tassels. What can I say? Uh, but I do like the plaque behind the tassels. And I really wish that they would have taken those out and just left that plaque on there. It would have made it a little bit, um, a little bit more simple, I guess. Uh, but it is somewhat stiff. Um, it just because you do have leather and you do have canvas, but I think that it'll it'll get uh, a little bit softer over time. Uh, so it's not going to be as soft as the Gucci Soho Disco, just because that one is all leather. But still, it's very similar. So if you aren't fan of a uh, fan of Gucci, but you like that silhouette, then I think that this is a fantastic way to go. Uh, but uh, that that off white one is beautiful, especially up against the the monogram canvas. I don't know, and then you have the gold hardware. I just think that it all works. So if it didn't have, if it had a detachable strap and if it didn't have those tassels, then that is definitely something that I would add to my collection. But unfortunately, it is not something I foresee myself uh, picking up. But fantastic question. Once again, congratulations, and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Lily R. I was wondering if you could explain how to purchase items at a boutique. Yep, I said it. I haven't purchased anything at the boutique yet but it feels like going into Starbucks for the first time. I don't know what secret stash lies in the back, so I feel dumb asking for something without seeing it. Help with the secret menu. Uh, this is a fantastic question, especially as you said, if you are new uh, to purchasing at the boutique or if you're new to luxury goods altogether, or even if you're going into a fashion house that you normally don't end up purchasing from, I think that this is great. And uh, usually when it comes to boutiques, they'll have, uh, they tend to have their most current collections out on display. They'll have uh, like, I don't know, 15 to 20 handbags, small leather goods, jewelry, uh, belts, shoes, anything like that from their current lineup they have out on display. But but they have drawers full of their classic goods kind of tucked away. I know that Chanel, not only do they have it in the drawers, but they have it behind the mirrors. And sometimes when they open up those mirrors, you just see shelves and shelves of these beautiful handbags. And I'm thinking, why don't you have just those out on display instead of some of these other goods? You know what I mean? <laughs> um, all right. So if you are going into the boutique for the first time, I always suggest doing a little bit of research before you head in there and kind of have a list made up in, of your, in your mind of some of the small leather goods or handbags that it is that you want to look for, if that's what you're looking for. You know, some people might look for belts or anything like that. Uh, but in general, I like to have a list set aside, you know, when I go into, for example, when I go into Gucci, I want to take a look at this, I want to take a look at this and blah, 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 even if I don't see it out there. So if you're going into Louis Vuitton for the first time, uh, when you head in there, go straight towards the counter. And, uh, you know, sometimes they'll acknowledge you right away. Other times you might have to wait a little bit. But when the sales associate comes over to you and they say, how can I help you? Uh, I would just say, you know, I have, um, I, I would like to take a look at some small leather goods. I would like to take a look at some handbags or whatever it is that, that you're looking for. And you can say, and I was wondering if you have them in stock. Sometimes they might not have them in stock, especially if it's an item that's extremely popular, such as the Toiletry 26, or um, just sometimes they're classic handbags they don't end up having. But even if they don't, they might end up bringing something out, else out that's kind of similar in size, or they can say, we can order it for you, or you know, they'll be able to give you a little bit more information on that. And sometimes you'll have sales associates that are so incredibly knowledgeable. They'll be able to give you the history of the print of the item where the name came from and all that other good stuff. So that's what I always do. I always suggest have a list set aside of the items that you want to look for, even if you don't see them out and about, because chances are they might end up having them tucked away, you know, under a secret vault or whatever. Um, but just ask the question and they can say, you know, we don't have it. We can order it for you. I have something similar. Would you t like to take a look at it? And that 
that's where the conversation just kind of takes off. But most importantly, don't ever feel silly for asking to see something that is not out on display because as I said before, chances are they might have it tucked away in a drawer. And you can also tell the sales associate, hey, this is my first time in the boutique, I'm super nervous. And sometimes they'll want to make uh, the shopping experience for you even better. They'll try to make it even more memorable. So I hope that this was helpful and I hope that you have a fantastic time at whichever boutique you decide to go for. Next question from Jang Sweet. What do you think of the brand Aspinel of London? Would you consider purchasing a bag from this brand? I'm planning to get the Mayfair bag and the shiny lilac croc. Uh, this is a great, great question and I absolutely love Aspinel of London. They have some incredible pieces. Not only that, they have phenomenal price points as well. There are two that stand out that I've kind of had my eye on and I will insert pictures of them right now. Aren't they gorgeous? I go back and forth between uh, the mini trunk. I love the pink one because I think it's a beautiful color, but I love the black one because it does have that smooth leather and come on, that gorgeous red interior. Uh, and then the Lottie bag kind of reminds me of a Chanel classic flap without uh, the logo. It's a little bit more understated. And I thought I would also include uh, the Mayfair because it's a beautiful bag as well. So I, I'm all about this brand and I definitely blame two YouTubers for my love uh, for <laughs> for these beauties. The first one is Sophie Shohet. She did a collection video, I think it was probably five or six months ago, on the pieces that she has. And the other one is Lux Purse Love. She did a What's in My Bag for her Lottie bag. And between these two ladies, I was able to appreciate more details of these bags. Like I said, they're super understated. They have exquisite leather and phenomenal price points. So um, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, but if you're planning to get the Mayfair, absolutely absolutely go for it uh, and um, yeah so hopefully I'll be joining I'll be joining you on that um, you know on adding an Aspinel of London to my collection because I don't know it's kind of different too you don't hear about it too 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 much at least not here in the United States uh, so that's another aspect about it that I really like so yeah <laughs> I'm definitely definitely digging it and I think more than anything I'll go for the mini trunk before the Lottie bag just because it's it's completely different from something in my collection, you know what I mean? So um, yeah, I'm all about it. If you guys do have Aspinall of London's, let me know in the comment section down below how you have found them to, uh, to wear. I know that Sophie, when she was talking about her Lottie bag, she says that she uses it mostly for work and um, she's used it to death and it's worn very, very nicely. So um, I'm still doing a little bit of research on them as far as how they, you know, how the wear and tear is, but I would love to know if you guys have any feedback on them. Uh, if you can just, uh, you know, if you could just tell us in the comment section down below, but fantastic question. I say go for the Mayfair and hopefully I was able to help. Next question from Sinful65. What is your most worn bag? Day in and day out. It's the bag that you have used the most over time. This is not your current one, just the one over the past few years. So I guess you cannot include the newest ones, but they can get an honorable mention. Uh, this is a fabulous question, and the bag that I have used the most over time in my entire handbag collection has been this beauty. This is the Louis Vuitton Neverfull MM in the Damia Zor. I've had this bag for nine, 10 years somewhere along those lines and I feel that it has worn incredibly well for as long as I've had it and uh, it does have a little bit of the darker leather on the handle part here more so here than on any other part and then you also have a little bit of darkening in the middle um, more than any other part of the trim but uh, I love the honey golden color up against the Demi Azor. I think it is beautiful and it's just one of those bags that I don't think I will ever ever get rid of there have been times when I think about possibly switching out the leather like we've talked about on Minx Monday, but I think I'm gonna leave it exactly the way that it is. So this baby, this is the one. And I remember when I first got it, I used it, I think every single day for a, like a year and a half or two years. And that for me is a really long time to constantly use a bag. So um, <laughs> that really helped to acquire that honey golden patina. Uh, the other bag that I have used more recently throughout the years, um, I don't know why I didn't bring it out, but it's actually up on my top shelf. It is the Chanel medium large in the black caviar leather with 
the silver hardware. I absolutely love that bag. It has made my most used handbag la the last two years that I've done that video uh, in December. So that guy I've also used quite a bit. And as far as honorable mentions of the newest ones that are to my collection, it definitely has to be this little Palm Springs mini backpack. You know, like I said in a, uh, either last week or a few weeks ago, it's one of those bags that I was for sure, you know, I thought, okay, this is not gonna be part of my collection. No way, it's not for me, it's not for me. But but I just, I love using that bag. I use it every single month. So that guy definitely gets the honorable mention. But as far as the most used of all time, my ride or die, it is the Neverfull MM in the Damien Azor. So <laughs> I think that's probably why I'm such a fan of Damien Azor. But then again, I also live somewhere where I do have the possibility to use it a lot more often because we don't have rain or anything like that. It's very dry. It's very hot here, uh, but um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm a huge, huge fan of Damien Azor, and it's probably because of that bag. So, uh, fantastic question, but I would love to know your guys' most used handbag of all time. Remember, not recent ones, but just out of the entire time that you have been either collecting handbags or buying handbags, what's the one that you always go to no matter what? And I know that this one hasn't gotten a lot of love uh, within the last year or two, uh, but I'm definitely busting it out a lot more often now because I just, I don't know. <laughs> I did get a purse organizer for it, so it makes it a whole lot easier when it comes to a Neverfull. That's also something else I, I never thought I would say that I like purse organizers. But when it comes to this type of bag, um, I definitely appreciate it. Right now it does have a beige one. I'm not too crazy about the beige in here. I prefer to have uh, the pink just so there's a, a little bit of a contrast. But anywho, I'm getting sidetracked. Again, I would love to know your guys' most used handbag in the comment section down below if you want to share. So fabulous question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Daisy Patton. How do you feel about the St. Placid? or the Clapton. In lieu of the Pouchette Matisse. Uh, this is a great, great question. And uh, when it comes to the St. Placid, I think that it's a little bit more similar to a Chanel classic flap, more so than um, more so than the Pouchette Matisse. I still think it is a beautiful bag and uh, it is very lightweight. It's very comfortable uh, when you do put it on your shoulder and it comes in at 2120 here in the States. And there's also a few different colors to choose from. Uh, but I love that microfiber lining. I think that it's a little bit... Um, it adds to the overall beauty of the bag and it kind of gives it that dressed up feel to it. Uh, but I think that when it comes to the Clapton, that one definitely reminds me more of the Pochette Matisse. It does have um, the same type of feel to it. I love the fact that it has that gorgeous uh, leather on the top part of it and then you have the canvas on the bottom. Again, you have the microfiber lining. That one comes in at $19.90 here in the States. I know quite a few of you have let me know on Instagram that you had recently purchased the Clapton and a lot of you guys love it. And uh, some of you have also said that you found it to be a little bit more comfortable than the Pouchette Matisse because some people think that the Pouchette Matisse tends to be a little bit stiffer because it's all uh, canvas but this one a lot of people like it just because of how soft the leather is on top and it still has um it still has quite a bit of organization uh, on the inside. So I think both of them are great. I just feel that the Clapton tends to lean a little bit more towards the Pouchette Matisse. Uh, but um, I don't know, especially with the Damia Ben and that pink, it looks fantastic. Fantastic? Fantastic. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. So hopefully that was able to answer your question. And the last question from Trace Trace. Do you have any problem with mold appearing on your leather bags? I am wary of them and would like to protect my bags. Uh, this is a fantastic question and I have not experienced any mold on any of my luxury handbags. However, in the past, many, many years ago, I had an all leather handbag that I got from, uh, do you guys remember Robinson's May? Uh, it was a department store that was extremely popular way back in the day. Um, they're no longer around, but I had gotten an all leather handbag um, then. And I remember I put in a bath towel to kind of um, 
to kind of keep its shape and I put it in a box. I completely forgot about it and when I went to go to retrieve the item again after a long, long time, uh, I did notice that there was quite a bit of mold inside of the handbag and I think that it's because of the moisture that the bath towel created, not only the bath towel but also the fact that I had it in an enclosed box. Uh, so that's what ended up happening. Uh, it was a very, very humid summer. I will never forget it. So that also added to it. So the humidity, the fact that it was in a box and the fact that I had it, um, that I had it, what's it called? Stuffed with a bath towel really ended up kind of creating that mold. It was disgusting. <laughs> I was just like, what the heck is happening here? It was I thought I had left, <laughs> I thought I had left like a Jolly Rancher in the bag. I know, you guys are probably like, ew. Yeah, <laughs> it was disgusting. I'm like, is that candy? Oh no, it's mold. <laughs> so that's why I'm very, <laughs> I try to be very careful about keeping my handbags out so that the leather can breathe and that I don't experience any type of um, mold issues, you know, with, uh, with creating moisture or anything like that. So nothing with my luxury handbags, but definitely in the past with my Robinson's May all leather handbag. I can't even remember the, the brand that it was from, but anyways, uh, yeah, so hopefully that was able to answer your question. Uh, all right, you guys, so that does it for Minx Monday Q&A. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I was able to help. You guys had some fantastic, there I go again, some fantastic questions this week. I can't talk to save my life. Uh, what's new? Uh, anyways, for this week's lineup, I do have my favorites video that I'll probably end up putting up either Wednesday or Thursday. And uh, for Friday, if not Saturday, um, I wanted to do my Louis Vuitton small leather goods collection. I've had a lot of you guys ask me if I can do a collection video uh, solely on my Louis Vuitton goods. I thought about kind of combining all of the fashion houses that I have small leather goods from but I think that would make for, for a really long, long video. So I'm just going to stick to Louis Vuitton. And, every, and if everything goes okay, then I will do other fashion houses, you know, later on. But uh, yeah, so a collection of my small leather goods from Louis Vuitton should be up uh, later this week, as well as my favorites video. But again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already and you would like to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the red button down below and hitting that bell so you're notified when I upload videos, which is anywhere from two to three times a week. And I will see you guys later. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day.